Hey, what's going on? So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys six different tools that you can utilize to take your business to the next level. Or if you're trying to start a business of your own, leverage these tools to actually build some infrastructure for yourself and be able to sell it for thousands of dollars. No more introduction is needed. Let's get into it. So first off is make.com. If you're new to this channel, I love using make some of my tutorials. I'm using make to actually do the integrations. Uh, so think of make as a high level third party integration platform. There's so many different tools and builds you can do with make and it essentially is the glue to everything you can possibly do. What I mean by that is you can include lead gen, you can automate sales tracking, you can do manual data entry, customer support. The opportunities are endless with how you can actually go about configuring different make builds. And the best part about make, it's extremely a Affordable. In fact, this is Zapier's biggest competitor right now because Make is significantly cheaper. How Make and Zapier both work is based off how many tasks you're using for every node, right? So Zapier charges you like $30 a month for, I think it's like 5,000 tasks or something like that. Whereas Make charges you $11 a month for 10,000 tasks. So it's way cheaper, uh, very user friendly. And the AI element that I'm talking about that takes place is the ability to embed uh, any AI you can think of as far as OpenAI, Claude. Once again, it's like the glue. It's a really good tool to tie everything together. This is a quick look into make.com. This is a specific scenario I set out uh, where we're actually doing AI driven call bookings uh, that we're tapping in from a dialer. The dialer's calling them up. And if and when there is a schedule or an appointment that the lead wants to book in on, this make.com scenario is integrated with Go High Level. So uh, it'll find the contact store of their information. It'll run it through the AI. It'll take the time that the user wants and it'll package it in a uh, kind of technical facing way. So when we pitch the time off to our actual calendar request node, then we're able to pull the exact time. And then once the time slot is either filled or not, uh, we're either going to tell the client, hey, great, we booked in. You're good to go. So look forward to talking with you on our sales call. Or we're going to be like, hey, that slot was filled. And then we're going to present two additional new times for that lead to attempt to book in on. Or like in this mix scenario, this is insane for helping out sales teams. For every single call recording that's taking place for cold calls, we're collecting the information and we're pushing it through this data store. We're storing all the transcripts. We're then pitching that off to an AI and they're deciding how the call went. If the call was booked, then they're completely removed from this workflow. But assuming that they weren't booked in, we're either going to send them a follow-up because they answered. And what this answer to means basically just means to differentiate the follow-up. So we're not super redundant with how the follow-ups are taking place. And then assuming that they did not answer, then we're sending them a voicemail follow-up, basically being like, hey, I tried to call you, didn't answer. Uh, let's try to talk soon, right? So the opportunities are endless with this. And here's a make scenario I've built out for my Instagram and SMS AI appointment setter in which it's receiving any incoming message from the user. And then based on the context, it's either going to send a follow up, it's going to send a reply, or it's going to push the lead to book a sales call. Again, it's super versatile. And, you know, especially if you have a coder's background or you're used to building out automations, it's really easy to pick up and see when I was first learning mate, I watched a few tutorials, of course, tried to learn the ropes, but you know, I'm now at the stage where I can think of something and just go out and build it. And that's really when it gets fun when you're able to do stuff like that. Now, the second super valuable AI tool is going to be Vapi AI. I know there's a lot of different voice agents on the market, but I found great value in Vapi because there's a lot of different tools you can use to actually do uh, third-party automations outside of just the scope of Vapi. Also, just the voices and the way these AI sound on Vapi AI is super solid. They tap into 11 labs. See, the primary use case for Vapi AI and why it's so good is because you can essentially leverage a voice AI agent at sheer scale. See, the biggest limitation with a sales team of cold callers is... Uh, you know, it takes just as much time to call one lead as it does the next. And so, you know, it's always going to be a sense where if you're looking to scale, you have to hire more sales guys. Whereas Vapi AI could have 100 phone calls all at once simultaneously. So it's definitely a numbers game. So if you have sheer volume, if you have like thousands of leads you need to get through in a short period of time, plug them all into Vapi AI and just let it rip, see what happens. And then another few use cases. So customer support for something more internal. So like, let's say there's a scenario where the lead is texting with AI appointment setter, or if you have a business phone number, but on weekends, you need someone to manage it for you and you don't have a team to pick it up for you. You could have an internal VAPI agent be that guy that actually picks up the phone for you. And it's just, it's awesome. So this is just a quick look into a sandbox account I have for VAPI AI. But what I want to note is this is how you go about prompting sales agents within here. So after you've got your phone number linked, it's as simple as plugging in the script on what you need the agent to say, you know, the first message that takes place and, you know, the overall like sales appointment script that you need from them, or if it's more internal, you know, you can do literally whatever you want. As far as if you can think it, you can have the AI say it. Now, what's great about this, like I was saying earlier with the make.com automations, uh, just to take it a step back, I'm currently using VAPI AI and integrating it with make.com. So they go hand in hand. So like those workflows I was showing earlier with the call recordings and booking sales calls that starts on VAPI AI. 
And then what's cool within tools, you can have all sorts of different tools that you can custom configure for your agent. So in this case, this is my no response agent in which it's going to tap into make.com and be like, hey, there's no response. Uh, and then send over a voicemail SMS text to that lead. But you can take it a step further and do call bookings here. Or if you have just some unique job, like let's say it's something more internal, like based on the sales call, you want to throw the transcript and a basic summary of how the call actually went. And then you could throw that all into like a Google Sheet, give that to your sales guy so they're primed for the appointment. But what's awesome about Vappy, it gets super granular with things. Like you can do HIPAA compliance, like I said. You can do call transferring to a real person. You could even do call transferring over to text. Be like, hey, uh, there's no good time. How about I just text you? Then spark a conversation over text. There's so many ways to go about it. Um, then you can set up even, you know, things as specific as how you need this AI to time out as far as, you know, when's it ample time to stop the conversation. You can edit how long a pauses should be in between. You could set the voicemail. There's there's so many different things. I could sit here all day talking about Vapi AI. I've got several videos on it already. This is just a quick rundown of tools that I'm personally using. So the next tool is Fathom AI. The reason this one is so good is because it's free. They do have an upgraded plan, but I personally have never had a need to increase to the upgraded plan because the base free plan you have has everything you'll need. And so I have all my sales guys, all my team members use Fathom as well. So when we hop on calls, it's just your note taker. It's quiet, just kind of sits in the corner and it is an extremely good note taker. Like it's very impressive the outputs these things can have. It also has a call recording feature. And so if there's ever an instance where maybe you need to re-reference how the call recording went or you know your client wants to see something valuable you talked about on the call, you just pitch them over the Fathom recording and they've got it all. And essentially how it works after every single meeting, Fathom will send you an email over the whole context of how it goes. So here's an example. So this is a Fathom recap email that I got going over the entire conversation and the whole meeting plan. This is with a marketing agency that I'm partnered with and we're building out a client's funnel together. They're doing more of the copywriting side. I'm doing more of the backend automation side. But you can kind of read through here and see, you know, the game plan, key takeaways, different shit we talked about and, you know, how we're going to take it to the next level. And then if you click view meeting, then it'll push you into the Fathom interface uh, assuming you're signed in it'll push you into the fathom interface then as you can see here you know we can see the actual recording that took place and then all the takeaways as well you can even compile it into a doc and then send it over to someone if you want something more client facing and you don't want them to see all the back-end messiness of a fathom account like this so if there's any tool you're going to use this one's free 99 so might as well use it and also forgot to mention over on vappy it's really just cost per call. So typically for like a minute long conversation, you're looking for anywhere in between eight and 12 cents. It varies on how long your knowledge base is, meaning how long that prompt that you're giving it is. Uh, and a pro tip, you can actually get around that. If you embed your knowledge base here within files, instead of having your prompt directly here within the system prompt, then you will save a few cents per call. But as you can imagine, it adds up at scale if you're going to be calling thousands of leads. So moving on to the fourth point, Arc Ads AI. Now, especially if you're not very creative or you know you don't really have anyone on your team to do editing work for you, this is really going to take you to the next level. Like a lot of beginners that I see are trying to launch ads for the first time or trying to get some Instagram content going, but they don't really know what they're doing. It's very obvious and it makes for a hideous ad creative or, you know, a hideous new reel you're trying to get going. And if you look at the prices here, they're awfully affordable. If you consider the cost of what it's going to take to have a human editor actually do this for you. See the prices here. I don't know why this is in euros, but you're going to get 10 videos for 100 euros and converting things back into USD. But, you know, I was paying an editor overseas editor and I was still paying him like $30 per, per edited video. So, you know, if you can imagine, this is definitely a cheap option, especially if you're trying to do some creative testing. Now, trust me, there's still definitely value in having a human editor. I'm not at all saying get rid of a human editor in order to do this work. But if you can imagine, let's say you're trying to do a creative test just to validate your offer. You could easily whip something like this up, get an MVP ad going in which you now have 10 different ad creatives that you paid $100 for, 100 euros for, and you can test those out on the market, see which one's converting. And then once you found your winner or a couple winners, you can go to a human editor and be like, hey, this worked well. Could you build this and make it better? And it, especially if you have a creative mind on your team or you go out and find someone to do that for you and they actually produce something and take this AI generated ad to the next level, then you now have a winning ad creative you could theoretically make tens of thousands of dollars from. Then touching on this, like I said, testing ads is always great. But another great thing is service delivery for yourselves. So if you're trying to add new amenities to your service to bring yourself to the next level so you're able to charge high ticket, little things like saying, oh, I'll do ad creatives done for you. But then on the back end, you're just creating AI generated videos or you have your clients film themselves and then you can take an AI copy of them and then produce ad videos off that. That'll take your service to the next level, make you 
you seem more attractive as far as the value that you're actually bringing to the table. And as far as overhead expenses for your own business is going to be, it's relatively cheap. Now, moving on to number five, we have Lovable AI. This is a web development platform that uses AI driven thinking, basically meaning you can ask an AI to build you out something and it'll actually output it. And what's cool is it doesn't just output it and that's that. You can continue to chat with it and it'll make edits live on the spot. Now, this is typically called vibe coding. If you don't know what vibe coding is, it's going to become a big buzzword soon. So listen up for this definition. But basically, if you are, aren't actually doing any coding or integration yourselves, but you're telling an AI to do it, and then it goes in the back end and actually does the bitch work of coding it, you're vibe coding. So if you can imagine now, you can chill here all day in the command prompt and just type in exactly what you're looking for. And, you know, let's say it spits out something perfect, but you don't like how the headline looks. Be like, man, change that headline. Or you don't like the color scheme you're going for. Be like, man, it's too dark. Let's make a light color scheme. Now, if you can imagine, the only real limiter is your mindset and capability to think of a prompt. See, properly writing out AI prompts is an art form in itself. I've seen so many people that are very lackluster in building out AI prompts, and then they're like, oh yeah, AI is just a few years off. And although it's going to get significantly better in the future, don't get me wrong, there's often a lot more room for growth in the prompts that you're making out if you get very explicit with how you're saying things. I'm talking get as detail-oriented as possible, because AIs are stupid at the end of the day in the sense that they only hear things and understand things at face value. There's no underlying context, they don't really understand too much of sarcasm, or, you know, they don't understand what you meant to say. They're going to see what you said at face value and assume that, right? So if you can be very, very surgical, be like, hey, I need you to build me this website. It needs to have a chat widget at the bottom right corner. I want like a orange and blue color scheme. I don't know. I'm just saying random shit now, but you get very, very, very detailed on things and it'll give you an initial output. And then from there, as far as vibe coding is concerned, you're just tweaking it. And then as far as pricing, you know, you can get the free version in which you can play around with it, which is awesome. And then once you're finally ready to take it to the next level, only 25 bucks a month. And then if you're getting on a team plan, 30 bucks a month, but honestly, even if you have a team, you could also just recycle the same email and have everyone just sign in from that same session. The only time that would really clash is if you have team members that are actively trying to work on it simultaneously then you could have save issues because there's multiple sessions open. So that's when you would want to use the team version. Last but definitely not least, we have Go High Level. Everyone already knows what this is, doesn't need much of an introduction, but the benefit of Go High Level is this is the best and most universal centralized platform to do all of your AI automations and have them funnel back into one place. Now, Go High Level has plenty of different automation tools within their own environment, meaning all the different workflows you can build out. But the best part of Go High Level is that they are intentionally very friendly with third party automations. For instance, I use my Go High Level as the centralized CRM, but within Go High Level, I'm able to tap into Lovable AI for all my funnels. I'm tapping into Vapi AI anytime I need to do an outbound cold call and a lead. I'm using Make.com for my AI appointment setters. And so all the conversation flow and all the lead management is happening within Go High Level. So it's the best centralized platform to get anything done. And especially if you're trying to sell your services, understanding and knowing how to leverage Go High Level is going to be huge because so many business owners are starting to transition over and adopt Go High Level for their business operations. So if you can come on board as someone that's competent in understanding how to use Go High Level off the bat, it's going to be so easy to sell yourself. So this is a look into Go High Level. This is just a quick one showing how I'm actually invoking cold calls from Go High Level. And then I'm pushing this over to Vapi AI. And then after the cold call takes place, assuming the lead did not book a sales call, then they'll come back over into my Go High Level system from Vapi AI and the make.com automations that took place to get us here. And then we set them up in a pipeline for continued follow-up. So we'll follow up with them the next day. We'll follow up with them in two days, three days, four days. This one specifically is like a 14 day sequence. Each time we're hitting them with a new follow-up SMS message, and then we're going to be invoking a new call that next day. So, you know, the opportunities are endless with how you can set up Go High Level. And with every platform I showed today, as far as the AI automations are concerned, they're all compatible with one another. And that's really how you can build a business out of these little automations. Yeah, at face value, just Vapi AI may not seem all that good. But when you combine Vapi AI with Fathom, with Make.com, with Lovable AI, with Arcade AI, and with Go High Level, you've suddenly got a business you can package and sell like $15,000 packages to clients for, for an entire sales fulfillment infrastructure. See, this is an AI appointment setter flow I set up for one of my clients. As you can see, we've had thousands of conversations with the AI talking to leads at this point. And just to give you a quick peek in one of the nodes, we're doing this to offload their Instagram DMs. And once the AI actually starts conversing with the leads, we're then literally organizing them in so many different pipelines throughout this client's account. We're able to manage if the clients get a booked appointment, if the lead is unqualified, if the lead needs to be downsold on, uh, and then we push them into different follow-up sequences. It gets very elaborate. But again, that's the beauty of this. And what's great is that a lot of these platforms, yes, they're complex at first, 
But over time, just having sheer experience playing with these softwares, I'm now at a state in the game where I can like think of different automations and then just go out and build them. Like I'll even have some go high level workflows where it's literally just a sandbox where I'm playing around with shit and making it work until it finally does. What's great about go high level is they really do try to be all encompassing and then any of the shortcomings they do have, they typically have a third party capability, automation or some sort of integration to fill that gap of whatever that shortcoming may be. And it's great at building funnels on, you can track leads on, once again, live data collection, need I say more, it's go high level after all. Pricing is going to look anywhere from 100 dollars to five hundred dollars depending on the plan but honestly most people i've worked with are fine with just the 97 dollars a month and you can do everything you need to but yeah guys these are the six ai tools you should look at integrating into your business again the more amenities you're able to add onto your offer as long as they're compatible is truly how you're able to ask for these higher ticket packages right so if i just was setting up a go high level build for instance i'm extremely commoditized there's so many go high level devs out of there if i'm just setting up different websites using lovable ai there's so many web developers out there just this alone isn't going to make me into a big business Business owner in the long run. You get where I'm going with this, but just building out creatives, that's not going to do much. Literally, editors overseas have already washed the competition, right? Fathom AI, it's already free 99, so there's no service there anyways. It's just a useful tool to have. Vapi AI is probably the most competitive in the sense that you could make a badass business model out of off of just this alone, but even then, the thing is, this requires make.com in order to make a lot of the cool shit possible. So what I'm getting at is if you zoom out the scope and you suddenly have a couple of these under your belt, you now just don't have one solution, but you're a one-stop shop to completely offload the sales fulfillment process or completely offload whatever offer that you're trying to solve for your clients. I'm going to be leaving the links to every single tool within the description if you want to play with them, see if they'd be a cool amenity to add to your business model and take you to the next level and actually be able to charge higher ticket prices for your clients. And on that note, I'll see you on the next video.